Hi, this is Jerry Smith, Viper Sales Engineer at Threat Track Security, and in today's video, we want to show you how to install the Viper Business Premium Management Console. Now, I've gone ahead and pulled up the system requirements page from our website here, and you'll want to take a look at this prior to installation so that you can make sure that you're installing on an appropriate operating system and that you do have the appropriate prerequisites installed beforehand. Note that if you do not already have the .NET Framework 3.5 already installed, the Viper installation will go ahead and take care of that for you. Now, I've gone ahead and saved the installer to my desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and double left click that to get the ball rolling. And then we'll go ahead and click the next button to go ahead and get this started. Now the first thing we need to do, of course, is accept the end user license agreement. And I'll go ahead and click next. Here we need to plug in some company information. And I'll just go ahead and plug in um, some letters here just to keep the ball rolling. But um, um, appropriate information would be a good idea here for you. Okay. This next screen will display the destination folder for your installation and you're given the option to either accept the default location or choose another location that might work better for you and you can do that just by clicking the change button here. We'll go ahead and accept the default and click next. Now here we have three different options for the installation. We'll be doing a full installation today but you do have two other options. Now the full installation will go ahead and set up the site and it will configure the database. The other two options when installing will ask you to go ahead and connect to an already existing Viper database. These come in handy if you have somebody on your management team or an administrator who would like to install just a report viewer or an admin console with a report viewer just so they can take a look at what's already going on. Okay, we'll go ahead and click next here and we'll click install to begin the installation. Now the installation does not take very long. We'll copy some files, uh, we'll start services, create that desktop icon. The console will open up and it will go ahead and start trying to connect uh, the Viper site service to the internal database. Looks like it's done that. And now the next thing we'll do is start up the configuration wizard here. We'll go ahead and click next to roll through this. This first page is licensing info and you can plug in your key here if you've already made a purchase. If you've just downloaded uh, to start your, uh, installing your trial, you'll notice that a key is already populated here for you and that's your trial key uh, as you'll notice here and you can keep rolling with that. We'll go ahead and click next. This next screen here is where we can start configuring the information for email alerts from Viper regarding threats found. And we can go ahead and plug in the from and to information. And this is information that will populate site and policy properties. And you'll want to check that configuration after the installation is complete. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this here and click next and, and go back to that later. This next screen in the wizard covers automatic policy assignment. This comes into play if you have automatic agent deployment enabled. In an auto deployment scenario, the default policy is what would normally be selected for the agent. However, enabling the automatic policy assignment allows you to dictate which policy the computer would be associated with depending upon what type of device it is, whether it's a server, workstation, or a laptop. Now Viper can discover what type of machine we're installing to and we can now deploy an agent with an appropriate policy that has the desired configurations already applied. And as you can see here, I've got a drop down menu. I can select whatever type of policy I would like to for each type of machine. I'll go ahead and leave that as default at this point and, and click next. On this screen, we can enable the removal of incompatible software. And by that, I mean that Viper can remove other AV products while installing itself. If we click on the show list button here, we can see which products and product versions we are currently able to remove. If you don't see your product or product version on this screen, please feel free to contact our technical support team anytime and we can get your product version um, added to this list. Okay. Additionally, we can configure some reboot options here and this is rebooting um, after the installation is done. I'll go ahead and leave the defaults here for all of this and click next. 
The next screen allows us to be able to begin some rudimentary configuration for patch management by allowing us to go ahead and enable automatic patch deployment. This configuration does not exist in the non-premium version of Viper. You'll also notice that we can have the Viper agent turn automatic Windows updates on if it is allowed by group policy. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck these um, and do my patch management configuration uh, in the console later on. I'll go ahead and click Next here. Next we have a screen that allows you to go ahead and provide some credentials needed for agent deployment. You can configure this later on in the console. I'm going to go ahead and do that. However, you will not be able to deploy agents from the management console until this is done. And again, you can do this later on in the console. Uh, by clicking on the Add button here, uh, you can add the username and password of someone who would have administrator privileges on computers that need Viper agents deployed to them. I'll go ahead and click Next and move on. On this screen, we can enable unprotected computer discovery. In other words, we can have Viper seek out computers in your network that do not already have Viper installed on them. And we can select the domains we want to look into, as well as how often we want to check. Okay, we'll go ahead and click Next. This confirmation screen tells us that Viper has finished downloading the latest threat definitions and agent software. And we go ahead and click Next here. And this last screen tells us now that the installation has completed. We'll go ahead and click Finish here. When we click the Finish button, we're brought back to the Management Console, where machines already begin to populate the unprotected computers list. So this concludes the installation process for the Management Console, and you're now ready to begin agent deployment and the centralized management of Viper Business Antivirus. If you have any questions or need any assistance, please feel free to contact our technical support team right here in Clearwater, Florida, anytime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope that you enjoy Viper and have a super fantastic day.